are welcome back as we kickstart a conversation that I think we have left for too long. We are joined in studio by the director of Four Paws South Africa, Fiona Miles, who has become a good friend and someone who inspires me a lot. She is here to discuss a very serious topic, probably the most important topic concerning the wild. We are talking about widespread big cat farming across South Africa, what that actually means. It's estimated that right now as many as 12,000 lions plus and tigers are awaiting slaughter on 400 plus lion farms and so-called eco-tourist sites in South Africa. We market ourselves as the custodians of the big five. We are selling them for animal parts. Good news is that legislation is changing for the better. It's time to get behind our environmental minister, Barbara Creasy. She's doing big things, and most importantly, organizations and movements feeding into the notion of one welfare. A healthy conservation effort means that the community around it is healthy. Fiona, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's difficult to know where to begin with this conversation. We've touched on the darker side before, never to this degree. So maybe a good place to start is an understanding of what big cat farming is. I, I don't think people quite realize what is going on here. Can you break down that ecosystem for us? So thanks, thanks Graham. Um, over the last sort of 30 years, the, the, the notion of intensively farming um, big cats has risen and increased because there's been a market for it. So we've invited people from abroad to come and do trophy hunting. And it's of course much easier to hunt something that is immediately available than to stalk and chase and potentially not get a trophy after two or three weeks, right? So the, <clears throat> the whole concept of trophy hunting is, has been there for quite a while now. And um, I think people have really not understood just how we are hunting captive bred animals that have been hand raised by people. Um, some of those animals have been given names by the volunteers who have helped to raise them um, and who've paid for the privilege to do so. These animals also then end up in like other tourism opportunities like walking with lions, for instance. Cub petting. Cub petting, instance. where um, as tourists were told, you know, these animals have been rejected by their mums or they're orphaned. They absolutely haven't. They've been ripped away from their parents and their mother at the age of a few days old. They've been hand raised specifically to then give us as people entertainment. So then there was another byproduct of this whole industry, which has been the um, feeding of the market uh, for traditional um, medicine. medicine. And that's been awful because South Africa actually had a bone quota and was allowing these bones to be shipped out legally. That bone quota has subsequently been put on hold, but what kind of stockpiles are we sitting on in terms of bones and things like that to, to feed the market? The, I mean, from, from that perspective, we need to look at the demand side and also create a lot of awareness from the, from the demand aspect. Let's, let's get the number down here. 12,000 plus lions are waiting to be mm. slaughtered for their meat products. Is that, is that an, a right estimation? And what, when we talk about that demand, it feels like we're supplying more than the market actually needs with that. What is the biggest driver here and how many cats are sitting on that verge? Well, every single day and every single day that we don't stop breeding, every single day that we don't address this matter in the most serious way, is every single day that more and more of these animals are being born into the situation. So as, as some are passing out the system, there's more and more coming into, into, onto this earth under these conditions. And, you know, they suffer terribly. Um, not only the, I mean, these are sentient animals, right? So the pinnacle of the wild. Taking them away from their mother, the stress caused to the to the mum, the stress caused to the cubs. Um, looking at the, the, I mean, some in some cases these animals are really neglected because not enough effort and energy is put into their care. Because at the end of the day, they're a product. They're um, just a thing, right? They're meat. They're meat. They they they're bones. They are skins. That's what they are seen as. Uh, we know that legislation is changing. There have been some big steps forward. We know that this is always a battle of two feet, taking one step past the other, that we need to drive momentum now behind these shifts. I think it begs the question that we need to ask ourselves, what does it say about society when the very icon of our wild spaces is at peril. If 12,000 plus lions are waiting to be slaughtered and around 2,000 or less are sitting in those wild spaces, that equation has reached critical mass. 
only if the humans around these spaces are winning and the lions are winning can we win together. It's as simple as that. And we'll delve a little deeper into that conversation, what the notion of one welfare actually looked like and the opportunities for both the wild and humans in that equation.